today we got our little $500 Craigslist Ranger and we're replacing the timing belt because it's all cracked up and hashed and even though this isn't an interference fit engine uh, I still don't want this to snap and I guess be stranded on the side of the road so we're gonna go ahead and replace that while we're um, doing a few other maintenance items here but basically you want to get all the pulleys off and the timing cover off and get down to this point so right now we're using our harmonic balancer puller here to um, pull this guy off which is in place of where on a normal engine a harmonic balancer would be um, as you see here we also have a lot of our cooling system removed which gives us a lot of extra clearance to work with uh, you don't necessarily have to do this but as you see he would already actually be into the radiator and again we were just servicing other parts like a thermostat and a new water pump so all that's good but anyway we got that off and one thing to note is that this is an interesting unit here where you have to use this little adapter so that you can uh, get past the uh, um, inner diameter of this guy and get onto your crank and walk that off so anyway now we got down to this point and we can move on to the particulars of actually replacing the timing belt now again what we're doing here today pretty much works for any 2.3 liter engine but um, this one in particular being injected has this nice crank position sensor and we don't want to damage that and have to buy a new one and plus it's in the way so we're going to go ahead and remove that and then we'll be able to get our retaining washer off and then get everything lined up and get our belt off. So getting down to pulling our belt off here um, you need to pull the crank positioning sensor um, bracket out of the way which I actually unbolted this first and then notice this. But um, anyway, at this point, you can get your little retaining collar off, and now we're at the point where uh, we can get our belt off. But there's two 8mm bolts here that hold this bracket on, so if you get those loose, you can kind of just swing this on out of the way, and everything comes apart nice. Alright, so getting on to removing our timing belt, we want to have all our timing gears uh, lined up properly so that when we take our belt off and we put our new belt on, um, our valve timing is still where it's supposed to be. So the cam sprocket up here, it has a little um, timing notch in it, as does the case, and these need to be lined up. And when these are lined up, there is also a timing notch here on this washer and a notch here on the case as well. As well as there's also a notch actually behind this washer, but you can use this washer as well. They both have the timing mark and they're both in the same place. Now our other sprocket here is our oil pump. So technically there's no proper orientation for this, but um, in the manuals they do say to install the pointer straight up. Now, All right, so probably the most difficult part of this process to tackle is removing the tension from the belt tensioner here and it's got this spring and they actually make a tool to um, hook on here and relieve the tension which I would highly recommend getting before you start this whole timing belt swap endeavor but anyway it was late at night and we just made our own but, but again I would definitely recommend uh, you know getting the proper tool this is pretty crude but it is effective and it does work so basically what it does and this it works just like the actual tool from Ford it goes in here you take the tension off again you want to have your pulleys all aligned which we're in good shape you need to... all right so we got our tool in here we're just going to relieve the pressure and now our belt slides right off of there there's also a little bolt that's uh right in here that threads through that when you have everything together kind of holds it down and we'll address this when we're putting the new belt back on but this also has to be removed to be able to remove the tension but but anyway the timing belt just slides right off and get down here around that washer and now we can put our new timing belt in all right so i got kevin down here he's unscrewing the old tensioner and i'm going to go ahead and replace this while i'm here as well this being from 1989 you know that uh, pulley has probably seen a lot of miles and yeah you can even hear it um, there's no uh, grease in there really left and it's got some pretty good bearing noise at just low rpm where we can actually even just spin it and hear it so um, again we're just going to replace it with a new unit if you want to throw that in there not too big of a deal again it's super easy when you're already there 
and that just goes right in there real simple. So just another quick demonstration of how the tool works because it seems like everyone on the internet really doesn't show it all that well. So we have our spring here, our tool comes in if you want to show our, our notches. Um, really this middle piece doesn't even need to be here, it's more of a guide, but one part of the spring will land here, another part will land here, and it's just simply going to, uh, when it's all bolted up, it'll relieve the pressure. So as you see there, that's the action on that, and that stud that's still sitting there, that's uh, in the block right here, uh, this top piece will pivot on it, and it will effectively pull that tensioner um, out of the way, and like you saw, the belt will come right off. All right, so Kevin's way ahead of me here, but uh, basically he's got the new tensioner on. It's not that hard to do again because you don't have any belt tension here. So the spring is nice and relieved. You want to put it on, but you don't want to tighten this all the way because you still need to have that play in the spring, and we'll get that all tightened up when we have our new belt in. Before we slide our belt on here, I did mention that there's actually a mark on the sprocket itself that lines up with the case. Again, there is a mark on the washer as well as you can see it on the right. So you could use either or, they're located in the same spot, but I just wanted to make mention of that really quick. So you just got to be patient, um, get your belt over the notches on your sprocket here so the teeth line up. Again, your oil pump sprocket, uh, they specify it pointing straight up, but it's your oil pump, so it really doesn't matter um, too much. So um, at this point, we're going to have to get on our tensioner and get that all set up right but as you see the belt just slides right on without much of an issue all right so now we got our timing belt on here all our marks are lined up kind of the beauty of the oil pump being one of the sprockets here is you can move it around a little bit so you get your teeth all aligned again you want to pay attention that your marks are all lined up and your belt has slid into all our, your teeth here, as you can see, um, you know, if you have them sitting on top of a tooth before you go to do the tensioner bit, you're going to um, slide it into being a tooth off, and that's really not what you want. So we got everything lined up, and all we have to do is um, use our tensioner tool now and put that uh, tensioner back on the proper side of this belt you see with my thumb, and we're good to go. All right, so now we got our timing belt in. Our timing marks are still lined up on top and on bottom. All our teeth are good and seated like they're supposed to be and our tensioner is right. Again, it's nice to have this oil pump so you can kind of fudge it around a little bit to help you out with getting your teeth aligned. But now um, that retaining bolt I had previously mentioned uh, just goes in there real nice and easy and you're just going to want to run that all the way down and then we can tighten this guy up and our timing belt as far as on um, the particulars of getting the belt on and off, uh, we're done. So it's just reassembly from this point. Putting our crank positioning sensor back on here, this, this might be required, I'm not sure. It seemed pertinent to myself that we uh, turn this balancer unit here to where uh, this little piece that goes in between the sensor is in its proper location here before we went ahead and tighten these in. I just felt like if this was over here and we tighten this down and then started the engine, there's a good chance we could have had an alignment issue potentially and sheared it off. So, so now we're going to fire the engine after we get this all bolted down and make sure everything's good to go. There we go. People like Rangers, and I like them too, and that's why we have one. I don't want to own a full-size truck. I mean, I can see it for towing a trailer someday. I'm going to have to have one for now. Yeah, the insurance is higher. Everything's higher. So, this little four-banger five-speed gets good gas mileage. you got a truck bed. It's like an El Camino, just like ten times less cool. Yeah, and it's a Ranger. And I don't have a mullet, so. We can fix that.